Welcome back to Casual Camping and Outdoors. Today, John and I are backpacking out into the Bayard Conservation Area. Uh, this is just outside of Green Cove Springs off of Highway 16. Uh, we've never been out here before. And uh, we saw a couple of fellow campers and we asked them about the area and it was their second trip out here. But uh, there's a campground back here. Uh, and he said it's about two miles, so we're gonna walk back here and take a look and uh, set up a little day camp, maybe make a little hot chocolate, and uh, have a, a day adventure out here. So and hopefully you have fun. <laughs> yeah, I hope we have fun. It's kind of a gray, icky kind of a day out here. It's kind of cool out, but that just means we're not gonna sweat to death, right? Right, and hope there's no flies. Yeah, no flies, no mosquitoes, none of them Florida state birds. So uh, stick with us. Well, it looks like we're on the right trail. Let's hope. Let's hope. These trails out here are not particularly well marked. We've been hiking out here now for about 45 minutes, and this is the first blaze we've seen. We do know that the little campground is on the White Blaze Trail. So I believe if we keep heading this direction, according to that little sign back there, we'll hit the campground. And then we'll continue on to the White Blaze Trail because it makes a loop back to the parking area, but there's an observation tower that John and I would like to look at. I saw it on the map that the, that first thing that we're going to see is the observation tower, and then we're going on to the picnic table. I saw it on the Google map that you pulled up. Now, the area that we were just at, we didn't film it because there was two people there, and we try not to capture other people in our videos to respect their privacy. But there was uh, three or four picnic tables. There was a little bathroom just with one water. little, there was a non-potable water drinking well. So if you needed water to wash your hands or whatever, put out your fire, it's available there. We're packing water in. We've got a couple of liters of clean drinking water with us, which is what we're planning on making our hot chocolate out of. So uh, we'll keep heading this way and hopefully we'll hit the campground before too long and we'll take a break and uh, we're going to talk about some fire tinder today, show you a uh, homemade fire tinder source. Set up a little day camp. With, uh... Yeah, we brought a tarp so we may set up a little day camp and just hang out in the woods for a little while and then hike on back as long as the weather holds. Okay, the homemade tinder source that John and I will be making today are cotton balls. Uh, this is a very economical way of making homemade fire tinder. You can buy things like tinder tabs and other sources of uh, cotton that is impregnated with an accelerant. But if you buy, you know, 20 tinder tabs, that's 8 or $9 on uh, Amazon or on eBay. So you can make these. These have one major disadvantage over the pre-made ones. These can be a little messy. Now these are very simple to make. A hundred cotton balls was a dollar at a Dollar Tree. We picked these up today. This little jar of petroleum jelly was one dollar. These little cups come ten for a dollar. And you get these over where they keep the Tupperware and the uh, sandwich bags and the food storage. I guess they're made to store ketchup or something for your lunch. But this is a very simple process. Cotton catches a spark very easily from a ferro rod, from a match, from a lighter. And the petroleum jelly acts as an accelerant and flame extender that you can build on. So we do these very simply. We just take our petroleum jelly, wipe the cotton ball in it a little bit, and drop it in a little container. 
and you can start a fire with one cotton ball. Now, things like the tinder tabs you can put in if you have a hollow-handled survival knife, or you can even just drop them in your in your pocket or in your backpack the way they are. So they are, they're not as messy as the Vaseline or the petroleum jelly and cotton balls. But these are more cost-effective. And this little cup will keep our cotton balls dry and will keep it from making a mess. Uh, now, if you don't have the petroleum jelly, just about everybody these days has a bottle of hand sanitizer, and this was also just a dollar at the local Dollar Tree. Dollar for two. Yeah, you get two of them in the package for a dollar. And you just put a squeeze of that onto your cotton ball and just kind of work that in. And the way that you start your fire is once you've got your, we'll do it both ways. So there's our hand sanitizer. We get a fresh cotton ball and a little bit of petroleum jelly. You just kind of mix that in and mush it into the fibers. And we'll move these out of the way. We'll put the lid on those and then we can just drop those in our backpack and I wasn't counting but what I put five or six of them in there so there's a bunch of campfires in one little container. Now we're going to take a ferrule rod, this is John's ferrule rod, and we're going to take our favorite outdoor knife, and you'll see that these spark up very quickly. Make sure I've got these actually in the camera frame. Move the other stuff out of it. We're not going to burn the picnic table now, we're just showing you what we're doing to make our homemade fire tinder. So, That's burning. Since that one's the alcohol, it burns uh, a little more clearly. And then that one's burning. And just to show you that they are burning, you can probably hear the wind. I apologize if you're getting a bunch of wind noise. The Vaseline or the petroleum jelly, that's not, the Vaseline's a brand name. This is just a Dollar Tree brand petroleum jelly. It does burn longer and it burns better, but hand sanitizer can be used and it just catches a quick spark. Right when you say that, it starts, doesn't work. Yeah. But as you can see, the petroleum jelly, even on a windy day like this, burns just fine. But this is not how we're going to make our hot chocolate today. We're going to take this and put this over in the fire ring. For our fire, or for our hot chocolate today, we're going to be using this little, excuse me for the sniff, this is an Espit camp stove. And all this does is unfold like this. And then you can adjust the size based on the, you know, how big your pot is. This is our Coleman little pot. We open this up. There's a lid. Inside we have a couple of cups. John's going to, let's wash it out a little bit. Okay. Oh, whoop. I actually got you wet. That's the worst thing that happens all day. I'll be okay. Go ahead and fill that up. How, how about about two-thirds of the way. Go ahead and put another bottle in there. Is this going to be for water too? Crap, I need to pick up some stuff. That, yeah, I've been falling. Is that good? A little more. There you go. Alright, and when you buy these things, Make sure they, they come with these little fuel tabs. They're just little white cubes in, in the foam pack or uh, packaging here. And we are not leaving our trash. We leave nothing but footprints. I'm fucking... We take nothing but pictures. So you take a little fuel tab and it fits. As you can see there's a little square there and it's got air holes in the bottom to vent. Okay. So then once you've got that in there, we've also got our bush bag which has got some fire tinder in it. That, um, don't we just put that in there? That's... The way we're going to do this today is it can be a pain to get that fuel tab to, to light up with a ferro rod. 
so we're going to take our petroleum jelly impregnated cotton ball and start our fire. We're going to put our water on top of it and we're going to let that heat up a bit. So we'll be back with you in a minute. Now someone asked me the question one time, why do we worry about using a ferro rod? Why don't we just use a match? Well, you can. A match will light your Vaseline and cotton ball just fine. Here's the problem. There's our match. If you get rained on, that match is now completely useless. Water got in my eye. Water got in your eye? If you have your ferro rod and it gets wet, wipe it off. And you still have your fire source. So you can drop that in the water, drop it in the creek, it rained on, whatever, doesn't matter. Wipe it off, you're good to go. Okay, our fuel tablet is about burned out. We're seeing some water bubbles in our water, so that water's getting warm. John, we got a problem. More. We have no spoon. Can we use a knife? Let's use a knife. So. It's. Let's hope this gets. Sort hope, of clean. Let's hope we can clean the knife after this. Let's take it <laughs> off there. That was not the brightest thing I've done all day. Yep. And cheers. Skull. Well, John and I are just sitting here now listening to the breeze, enjoying the outdoors. You can see behind me, there's a tent there, but there's nobody here. And by the looks of it, it looks like that tent's been there a while, so I don't know who it belongs to. I'm not going to mess with it. It's not my property, obviously. But John and I are going to sit here and enjoy the breeze and drink some hot chocolate. Let's go. Mm. That's good. Anything made over a fire in the woods is better than it is made at home. Or in a glass. Or in a glass. Plastic cups rock. Alright, we're packing up to go, so we're going to go see if we can find the observation tower that's out here. And you're standing right in the way of the camera. Oopsie. Let me restart it. Nah, it's, we're not exactly professional photographers out here. Two guys playing in the woods. And as you can see, we've packed everything up, including our trash. Take nothing but pictures, or in this case, video. Leave nothing but footprints. Leave no trace. It's important to protect our natural resources. Alright, we're leaving the camping area, but we're taking a slightly different route back to the parking area. It's about a two mile trip back, about 45 minutes give or take, and according to the map, this trail should take us to an observation tower about halfway between here and there. 
so we're going to go take a look. Well, it looks like we found the observation tower. All right, John, take off. There's the trail we came in on. A pretty area. Well, John and I are back in the truck and uh, we're eating boiled peanuts and we did about five miles total today. It was a beautiful little hike and this was our first trip into the Bayard Conservation Area. But if I'll put a link to the website in the video description so you can see where we are. There's a bunch of different trails out here, different lengths ranging anywhere from a couple of miles to seven or eight miles, I think. But uh, this is definitely a place we're going to consider bringing the tents out and camping one weekend because it's very beautiful, very peaceful out here. And as a matter of fact, on one of these trails, it leads right down to the St. John's River. So next time we're going to bring our fishing poles. Well, thanks for joining us here on Casual Camping and Outdoors, and uh, we'll see you next time.